You're going to see what I believe what I'm seeing and what I don't believe what I'm seeing. Here's our herd hierarchy. Herd hierarchy. Time is now. Let's go. The top 10 NFL teams according to college. Number 10. Yeah, their next four opponents are one and seven. The Bengals are fine at 0 oh and two. If you can go to Arrowhead against maybe the best defense in the league, arguably, Andy Reid has extra time, Mahomes, and shut down Travis Kelsey and outplay the Chiefs, double their yards in the fourth, you're fine. Zach Taylor's teams don't do well in September. Joe Burrow doesn't do well. I, again, I'll say it again. About the time pumpkin spice lattes are available at Starbucks, that's when they're good. T. Higgins coming back. I like this team. Quarterback, pass rush, weapons. I like them. I don't care. They're 0-2. That team can beat anybody, anywhere, any weather. I do think they miss Joe Mixon a little, but we'll see. I like the team. Bengals 10. Number 9. Listen, the Niners have the second highest graded offense in the league. Now, they're beat up offensively. That's why I put them back at 9. Um, here's what I really worry about. Brock Purdy's been sacked eight times in two games, and I don't look at the Vikings as having one of the better pass rushes. So they're beat up, and they're not protecting Brock Purdy. But, thank God, uh, you know, they still have a very good deck without Debo and Christian McCaffrey. Shanahan's remarkable. But they're not the same team without McCaffrey and Debo. They're not. That's why I put them nine. Number eight. I don't know what to do with the Seahawks. Geno Smith, to his credit, like Baker Mayfield, playing really well. Dude's completing 74% of his throws. Well, he's played this team and he's played that team. Here's all I know. The last two drafts were excellent. In fact, I could argue the last three drafts are excellent. And I'm seeing this young defensive coach like a D'Amico Ryans do really cool things. DK Metcalf, Jackson Smith, and Jigba are tremendous. And Tyler Lockett, I love their weapons. Running back, tight end, wide receiver, and I've been critical of Geno Smith. You can win a lot of games in this league when your quarterback is a big guy that's accurate at 74%. I put them at eight. Number seven. The Bucks. I buy into it. Again, Baker's playing his butt off. Eight and two over his last 10 starts. He and Chris Godwin are totally connecting. Now, the Denver game this week is sneaky. Um, and they're, you know, right now, though, to go to Detroit, I don't know, they, they went in there all banged up and injury riddled, and they won. So I buy Tampa. I buy Baker. He's playing with a ton of confidence. I've always thought Todd Bowles is a good defensive coach. In New York, it just I didn't think he was quite ready for New York. If his first job would have been in Tampa, it may have been different. But in New York, they're impatient. I like the coach, and I like the quarterback. I have them at seven. Number six. The Vikings. I don't know how long it's going to last. I mean, they lead the NFL with 11 sacks. I don't think that's going to last over the course of a season. But they are 9-0 and under this head coach, Kevin O'Connell, when they tie or win the turnover battle. So, I mean, he's cleaned up Sam Darnold significantly. That's what he does. He is the quarterback whisperer, the tall Sean McVay. He, Sam Darnold, I mean, even the Fred Warner interception. Fred Warner's the best linebacker in football. How many other linebackers get that ball? Um I mean, Darnold led a game-winning, clinching drive without Jefferson, Addison, and TJ Hawkinson. I think we may have the best young coach in football in Minnesota. I have the Vikings at six. Number five. I like the Saints. Let's not go crazy. I need one more week of the Saints. Derek Carr, I got to give him credit, though. Uh, the run game, Alvin Kamara is a beast, and they are leaning on it heavy. They have the highest rushing percentage, 64% in the NFL for, through the first two weeks. And Clint Kubiak, again, from the Niners system, these quarterbacks get the Niners system, and they look different. Alvin Kamara has been a beast. Um, it's just a new team that's shocking everybody. I want one more week, but I have them at five. Number four. You know what I like about the Bills? First time in seven, eight years, they have a star running back. They can run the football now. Nine and two since offensive coordinator Joe Brady arrived. So Josh Allen has been very dependent on offensive coordinators to clean him up. This is a new offense. The tight ends are excellent. Receivers don't have a star, but they have depth. And James Cook's a baller. So he is one of two quarterbacks in the league. If I'd have told you there's two quarterbacks in the league without a turnover, one of them's Josh Allen. Again, he's very coordinator dependent. Uh, Mahomes isn't. I don't think Joe Burrow is. Allen is, and he looks good there at four. Number three. I buy the Chargers. Their tackles, Joe Alt and Rashawn Slater, were the two highest graded tackles in the entire league. The only flaw with Kansas City is their strength. J.K. Dobbins looks like Buckeye J.K. Dobbins. Herbert 
for the record, is 18-0 when his team allows less than 20 points. He just needs a coach. Now, I don't think their defense will remain this viable, but they have two pass rushers, two elite tackles, a run game. That bus receiver, Quentin Johnston, uh uh-oh, he can play. This is a real team. I think this is a real team. Kansas City, good, not yet, but a real team. Number two. I buy the Texans. I didn't even think they played well against Chicago. They're young, and I could see them getting to the AFC Championship and making a silly play and losing to Kansas City. C.J. Stroud is insane. That kid is the most effortlessly accurate guy outside of maybe Burrow and Mahomes in the league. Nico Collins, his size, and they're comparing him to Andre Johnson. They got multiple weapons, a great left tackle, the quarterback, the coach, the culture, the defense right now, a lot of sacks. Again, Chargers, Texans, I buy. Saints, I kind of buy. Steelers at 2-0, and don't make the hierarchy. And number one. Number one. Listen, uh, I do worry. I don't think they're very good at tackle. They have. They were not very good on third down against the Bengals. They got to clean that up where they go get somebody at the trade deadline. They are. It, it is hard to win a Super Bowl, even with Mahomes, if you don't love the offensive line. And I don't. But I think they're coaching their structure, their defense, Chris Jones. Now, Travis Kelsey, I don't worry too much about because he was invisible for spots last year. Then, like, Gronk arrived when it mattered. I don't worry about that. I also think they've, uh, even though Hollywood Brown's not going to be back for a while, I think their weapons feel significant. Up. Okay, so let's talk about this. Um, first off, Pacheco's hurt, I'm pretty sure, and he's going to be on IR as well. So those weapons are kind of starting to get a little dicey. Uh, all right. Let's talk about this. Uh, I'm going to kind of go down through Colin's top 10, and then I'm going to give my 10. But remember, the rules are for me that I can only rearrange those 10 teams. I think that's a little bit more interesting way of doing it rather than bringing my own 10 teams because I kind of already do that with um, on first things first for Nick's uh, tier. So I'm just going to you know go through these 10 teams and what I think of them, and then I'll kind of go do my own order. That seemed uh, People seem to have liked that uh, the last week that I did that. So, okay, this is the, – the Bengals are a tough team for me to figure out um, because, listen, they didn't win the game that they should have won against the Kansas City Chiefs, quite frankly. And Patrick Mahomes gave the Bengals multiple gifts in interceptions, and they still weren't able to capitalize. You know, the, the Bengals' offense never felt very threatening to me. Not enough, as it should be quite frankly. So I don't really know what to make of the Bengals, and it's hard to figure out that loss in week one as well. Um, I think the Bengals can still be a really great team and can still be a top team, but it's just hard for me to make a little bit of sense of them. The 49ers, I know there's a lot of buying and selling on Brock Purdy, and and now Christian McCaffrey's injured and Debo's injured. Um, I think it is also hard to figure out who the 49ers are, specifically now because of some of these injuries. I mean, they're down Christian McCaffrey and Debo. That's going to hurt them. I don't care who your quarterback is. Whether you have Patrick Mahomes or not, Tom Brady or not, it's going to hurt you. So I'm just not sure. I think when they are full strength, they are a great top team in the NFL. No question about it. But they are banged up right now, and that is a legitimate issue. The Seahawks, let's like tap our brakes a little bit. They beat the Broncos. Broncos are hardly that good of a team right now, and they beat the Patriots. Like, let's let's just tap the brakes on them. I know Geno Smith is looking really good, and kudos to him. Happy for him. But I just think, like, I'm just not going to be so quick to to buy what they're selling this early on. Uh, it's a similar experience with the Buccaneers. Um, I think the Buccaneers are probably worthy to be a top 10 team, but they beat the Commanders, who barely beat the Giants, right? They got lucky, really, the Commanders, for the most part, that they were that the Giants were down of their kicker. You know, they could kick no field goals or extra points. And then they beat the Lions, who played awful. The Lions just played awful, had horrible game plan. I don't really know what is going on with the Lions. As you can see, the Lions aren't even a top 10 team right now, according to Collins. So, you know, you beat two non-top 10 teams. It's like, what am I supposed to do with that? Right. It's just like, what, 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 what am I supposed to do? It's just, it's, it's, it's hard to really gauge. And the Vikings, I'm super high on. They beat a top 10 team, right? They beat a top 10 team. Yeah, they beat the Giants, but they also did beat the 49ers. That goes a long way. I think Sam Darnold looks unbelievable. Unbelievable. Um, then you have the Saints. 
Colin did have the Cowboys originally top 10 until the, the Saints dismantled them. He, the Saints literally kicked the Cowboys out of the top 10. He booted them. The Saints look unbelievable right now. Um, when you're playing that good, it, it, it's it's pretty impressive. Now, listen, I don't think the Cowboys were technically a top 10 team, most likely, but I know that the Cowboys aren't trash. They're not garbage. They're not the, they're not the Giants. They're not the Panthers. So, that, so it does matter that you literally made the Cowboys essentially look like the Giants or look like the Panthers. That goes a long way to me. And then you have the Buffalo Bills. I think the biggest thing about the Buffalo Bills to me is, is that right now Josh Allen is actually playing the best. He's the best quarterback right now. I'm not saying he is the best quarterback in the NFL, but right now, so far this season, he is playing the best quarterback. He just is. You can you can look at PFF, what he's doing. First off, he's the number one running just back in general. Like the, He has the number one run game, just Josh Allen, beating all other running backs, number one. I mean, what Josh Allen is doing is just unbelievable. Um, it's just, and he's doing it against uh, tough, gritty teams. Obviously, the, the Dolphins team is a little bit hard to really kind of unpack because of everything that happened in that game. The Cardinals are looking really good, right? They dismantled the Rams. Um, they obviously have a potent offense, and it's just, they're the most resilient team to me right now is the Bills, mainly because of Josh Allen, because of what Josh Allen can do. The Chargers, you guys all know that I'm also real high on the Chargers. Um, it's just hard. Because, right, the Chargers, they beat the Panthers and the Raiders. I know the Raiders went out and beat the Ravens. That's why it's just like these these rankings early on are really difficult. Because, I don't know, are, are the Raiders a good team this year? I thought that they were going to be a pretty decent team with Gardner Minshew, which I made a couple videos about. I made videos about that, you know, for months and months, honestly. But it's still hard to really kind of gauge a week one victory like that. And then they play the Panthers, who are just obviously awful. They're benching Bryce Young. It's just hard to make full sense of it. I got to see the Chargers play a couple more like truly competitive games. And then you have the Texans. Um, the Texans, I think, are unbelievable. Um, they're 2-0. and um, The Colts, they got the best punch out of Anthony Richardson, who is an incredibly inconsistent quarterback. But when he's at his high, boy, is he unbelievable, all right? Like, he is either the worst quarterback in the NFL or literally playing like the greatest quarterback you've ever seen in the history of the NFL, right? So it's just like, and they got his, they got the best moment out of him, and they won. And the, and their offense continues to be legit. They went up against a really tough Chicago Bears defense, really, really tough. That might be one of the best defenses in the NFL right now, and yet they were still able to come away with the win. I think that goes a long way way as well um and then you have the kansas city chiefs listen the kansas city chiefs are always going to be in the top 10 as long as you got andy i'll probably say that in every single video as long as you got patrick mahomes and andy reed that alone and spags is your defensive coordinator that alone is going to put you in a position to be a top 10 team right patrick mahomes is unbelievable and andy reed no one can out coach him they are never out coached or just out quarterback necessarily but with all that said and this will lead, lead me into my own list the Chiefs don't look that great. They do not look that great. Patrick Mahomes is not playing well. Just, he's not playing well. I think he's like the eighth ranked quarterback right now. He's not playing well. He's throwing a lot of terrible balls, terrible interceptions. Um, They've yet to use Worthy as like a legitimate wide receiver. I find that concerning. Uh, he's kind of this gadget player, which I understand can be beneficial, but mm, they were really expecting big things out of him. And I'm not to say that he still can't be a game breaker, but he's not this reliable receiver that I think that they were really hoping. They were kind of hoping him to kind of be essentially replace a Tyreek Hill. And that's not exactly what's happening so far. Again, only two weeks, but still. Um, Pacheco's now injured. I'm pretty sure he has a like a fractured tibula or whatever it was, femur. I'm not, I, honestly, I'm sorry, I forget. But I'm almost positive he's going to be down now for, you know, four or five weeks. Um, Brown is done for the whole season. I think he can maybe come back for the playoffs potentially. Um, but he's down. He's done. Um, Travis Kelsey, he, he's not looking good right now. Um, he's looking like he is, he's looking like his age right now. And now if they're going to have to rely on him more, I don't know how that's going to work out so much for them. I really don't. Uh, so the, the Kansas City Chiefs, to me, looked beatable before. And now the fact that they struggled with the Bengals, and the Bengals should have won. And again, kudos to the Chiefs for finding a way. They do always find a way. And that is why they deserve a tremendous amount of credit. They do always find a way, whether they're playing great or playing bad. And that is a credit to Spags, Patrick Mahomes, and um, uh, Andy Reid, right? They, they find a way to win, even when it doesn't look pretty. 
and that that does matter when you're talking about it and so if i was forced if i was forced to use these 10 teams to make my own list and i'm basing this off of not my predictions not what i think is going to be at the end of the season i think it's more fun to do it based on how are these teams playing right now i'm not trying to predict whether this team is going to collapse down the road that's not what i'm trying to do for this top 10 list if you were saying you have to pick a team right now who's going to win the super bowl technically your safest bet is going to be the kansas city chiefs but the kansas city chiefs are not playing the best football right now they're just not so number 10 i got the bucks i got the bucks at number 10 um i'm still very hesitant to say how amazing of a team they are I, you know seven is just too too high for me I, I just can't do it they beat the lions who do not look good for the last two games that's just a reality and then they beat the you know they they beat the uh commanders and a, and a rookie quarterback the seahawks you know it's kind of similar things it's just like i definitely have to wait and see who are the seahawks um it's yeah, Geno Smith is is like the second best quarterback right now in the NFL. And it's like, is that going to continue? If it does, then my God, yeah. Then the Seahawks are are, are going to be dominant. But I'm just not so sure that that will continue. Again, it is hard to try to like figure out because I'm saying I, I want to focus on just this season as well as or, or what's been happening in, the, in these first two weeks and, and not try to predict. But there is certain things that feel a little bit more convincing to me than not. Um, and so, you know, that's why I'm still a little leery. The Bengals, I have them at eight. Um, they are ahead of the Bucks and the and the Seahawks mainly because I know who Joe Burrow is. Yeah, and, and T. Higgins will come back and that offense should look better. But I do have concerns about the Bengals. Um, they should have been able to come away with the win against the Chiefs and it should have been much more convincingly. They should have been able to win by like seven or ten points when Patrick Mahomes is literally giving you just beautiful gifts of an interception uh the 49ers the 49ers are so banged up right now I, I when you have that many injuries when you're missing your top uh you know receiver gadget player Debo Samuel and you're missing your uh running back and Christian McCaffrey it's gonna hurt you it's gonna it's just gonna hurt you it would hurt any single team up there you miss those types of players you're just not gonna be able to be the same team you just can't if you could then you wouldn't pay those players the amount of money that you pay them uh then I have the Chargers this is where my list starts to get really kind of crazy because then I have the Chargers. I'm super high on the Chargers. I got to see them play better teams. I just do. I just do before I can start putting them top three like Colin has them. They just got to they gotta play better. I believe in Herbert and I believe in Harbaugh majorly, but I'm just going to exercise some patience with them. And that's why I lean on the Bills because like the Bills, again, I know I can trust Josh Allen. I know what Josh Allen brings to the table. Um, I don't know if the, the, the Bills have all the firepower they will need. I'm definitely um optimistic about their run game and their ability to not rely on josh allen so much but at the end of the day josh allen is an absolute monster and right now is playing as the best quarterback in the nfl and that is who um i'm, I'm going to bet on and then that's why you all have the chiefs i really think it's kind of a toss-up between the two of them in terms of how they've been playing over the last two weeks where if they face each other who are you going to rely on and quite frankly it's so hard because I trust Patrick Mahomes to get the job done as well as Andy Reid to coach and Spags to coach. But right now you would say that the Bills are playing better football than the Chiefs, but it is hard to go against the Chiefs when you do have just, you just know the coaching is so locked and loaded there that I just don't have the confidence for any of the other teams that come behind them. And then I have the Vikings number three. Sam Darnold is just playing unbelievable. I mean, it's just just absolutely bona fide, uh, just top quarterback in the NFL. And he's literally a top three quarterback right now. I mean, it's just, it's unreal. It's, it's really so exciting to watch. And again, do I think the Vikings will be able to continue this? I have no idea. I'm not saying by the end of the season, the Vikings are without a shadow of a doubt, a top three team. And same thing with my number two team, the Saints. Like, I don't know, but this is where to me, it's kind of fun because I'm really just trying to rely heavily on how these teams are playing within the first couple of weeks right next week the saints can be rocked and the vikings can be rocked and it's like okay they came back down to earth sam darnold threw for four interceptions and the saints could do nothing offensively i mean you just don't know that's what makes it fun but again Derek carr number two with the saints like just dominant just absolutely monster games it's it's unbelievable it's unbelievable again granted salt playing the panthers and then the cowboys and the cowboys for the most part 
tend to get beat pretty good against good and great teams. So at the very least, I know that the Saints are probably a good slash great team, but where they land, I don't know. But since they've won in such dominant, intense fashion, um, I, I got them at number two. The Texans, the Texans technically right now, I just have the most confidence. I think they look the best and most complete over the last two weeks. They were given a gift by going up against the Bears with Caleb Williams, who can't do anything offensively right now, but they're... Um, but their offense is really, really sharp, and C.J. Stroud is at the top of his game. He is absolutely at the top of his game and is playing like a tr- like like we know now. This is I'm basing some of this off of last season. Like he is playing like he is truly a top three quarterback in the NFL, right? Like he is truly pl- proving he deserves to be in that top conversation. When you are going to mention Patrick Mahomes um josh allen and then you are going to mention cj stroud right like he just looks so smooth so confident and you just um it's just hard to to put them much lower um than that but those are just my thoughts i would absolutely love to hear yours what do you guys all think about collins herd hierarchy as well as my uh top 10 list based off of the 10 teams that were presented to me let me know in the comments below i read every single comment so whether you agree with me or disagree with me either way let's get in some discussions let's get in some fights but ultimately let's just have some fun and please do consider subscribing we are building an amazing community here and i would absolutely love to see you part of it i want to build something that we all genuinely feel connected to something that we're really excited to be part of i think we're well on our way to doing it and please don't forget to give this video a thumbs up as it really does help with the visibility and the algorithm. Thank you so much and see you next time.